when I think of each of those five ways, I sort of think of each one as having five aspects to it. If you think about each of the approaches, focus in, where you're working with your subject of experience, feel, image, talk. Focus out, where you're working with your object of experience, touch, sight, sound. Focus on rest, where you're working with restful states. Focus on change, focus on positive. If you analyze each one, you can see how in specific the, uh, they develop these three core mindfulness skills. So on one hand, there's sort of like generic exercise equipment. And you can use them as you would exercise equipment. If you think of a, a gym with five uh, workout stations, each piece of equipment has sort of like different settings. You know, you can uh, adjust the uh, settings. One way to use it is to do a set sequence, where it's like, okay, I do this, then I do this, and I always follow that same set sequence. So you can do all five ways, or just a, a subset of the five ways in a set sequence. Another way people use the exercise equipment is, well, they just go to one, <laughs> and they'll do a certain setting, and that's what they like to do. Another way that people use the a room full of exercise equipment is they'll do one and then they'll decide, oh, I'm going to go over to this other one and they sort of cut in and out. It's considered rude in a public place, but if it's your own set of equipment, you can sort of like, you know, loop around and branch as you wish. So if you wish to work within the, uh, the, the, the basic mindfulness system, you can either do a set sequence or you can just have a single standalone practice that you do. Or you can loop and branch depending on interest, opportunity, and necessity. So sort of like, you know, uh, start with one and maybe there's a lot of flow or maybe there's a lot of pain, okay? And so depending on opportunity on one hand or necessity on another hand, it's like an algorithm and you decide. So that's sort of one way to look at the, each of the five ways. Gen it's a, a generic exercise. Behavioral challenges are driven by sensory challenges. So sensory challenges are very primary. If you're in a challenging situation, the first thing you do is you make an analysis of what are the components, the sensory components in this sensory challenge. And you can also use this not just for yourself, but if you happen to be in a helping profession and you're guiding some other person, you help them make uh, an analysis of what the sensory challenge is. Once you see what the sensory challenge is, then you can start to formulate a range of strategies for dealing with it. Fortunately, there's more than one strategy, typically, and so you can try uh, different ones until you find what works. For example, let's say you have an issue of pain, physical pain. Like, uh, last night I sat for several hours without moving. So at some point, I started to get a lot of pain. Clearly, part of the sensory challenge is the uncomfortable touch of the pain. It could happen, though, that you have disconcerting mental pictures, negative talk, fear, agitation, poor me, feel flavors. So the sensory challenge could be more than just pain. It could involve three other factors. Essentially, there are three strategies for dealing with any sensory challenge. Turn towards it, turn away from it, or uh, focus on how things change. Things meaning any and all things, including it, the sensory challenge. Because focus on change is one of these unifying uh, practices. It's one of the practices that destroys distinctions. So a person might, if they choose a focus on change strategy, initially there might not be any change in the sensory challenge, but there might be some flow in some other part of their being. They focus on that, and then it starts to move into the sensory challenge. So you can turn towards, and then you bring your concentration, clarity, and equanimity to the sensory challenge. And that's one way to deal with it. Another way to deal with it is turn away. For example, if you have uncomfortable touch, 
and you're having a lot of feel image talk reactions to it, you could choose to replace those negative feel image talk with positive. You'll either be able to do it or not, but that would be to turn away from the uh, sensory challenge, focus on positive, or you could focus on restful states, or you could uh, attempt to focus on sound, say the sound of music. You're moving the attention away from the sensory challenge. Now, as the problem is that people think if you focus away from the sensory challenge, then you're into avoidance, denial, and suppression. If you focus on the sensory challenge, you're just going to make it worse. And the objection to focus on change is it's not changing. It'll never change. <laughs> So then you've set yourself up for failure, right? Because all possible strategies uh, you're, you have an objection to. But let's say you were to take an extreme turn away from it strategy. You're in pain, you have a lot of feel image talk reactions, you decide to focus on the sound of music. Are you really suppressing or denying? If you conceive of it as I am letting the touch, feel, image, talk, just dance its dance, do its thing. But I'm choosing to background it, meaning totally give it permission, but I'm not intentionally focusing on it. I am intentionally focusing on the sound of music. You're actually having equanimity with the sensory challenge. You're not directing your concentration or clarity towards it, but you do have equanimity with it, and that's an important factor. Your concentration and clarity is directed towards sound and is being strengthened by working against the, the gravitational tug of the touch, feel, image, talk. You have to bring yourself back to the sound that's strengthening your concentration. You have to learn to detect the sound even though all this other stuff is erupting like a Vesuvius. That revs up your, your uh, detection clarity piece. So you're, de you're developing mindfulness, concentration, clarity, and you're developing equanimity with what's going on even though you're not focusing on it. You can conceive of the endeavor that way. And at some point, the sensory challenge may cool out a bit, and the concentration and clarity that you developed with the sound of the music, you now could, if you wished, turn that towards the sensory challenge, and you've got a momentum of it, and now you are doing a turn towards strategy. And yes, it's true, if you t focus your attention on a sensory challenge, sometimes it may exacerbate it, but sometimes things have to inflate before they're ready to deflate, or the bubble has to get big before it's going to pop. That goes with the turning towards strategy. So we did yaza last night, late night sitting. So you get sleepy. So what's the sensory challenge? The sensory challenge is yucky sensations of sleepiness. What's the behavioral challenge? The behavioral challenge is keep your spine straight, <laughs> your eyes open, and uh, your uh, uh, consciousness uh, awake, okay? That's the behavioral challenge. Well, there's a, a, a relationship between sensory challenge and behavioral challenge. A turn towards strategy is turn towards the actual sensations of sleepiness, infuse them with concentration, clarity, equanimity until they are perfused and cause you less suffering and at some point probably break up into a flowing energy. That's a turn towards strategy. But you could do a turn away from strategy you could uh, notice that uh, each wave of sleepiness causes your body to slightly relax. You could notice that as you get sleepy, you, uh, you can't focus your eyes. Your external vision defocuses, causing a restful state of just light coming in. Your mental screen also may become like have a lot of light and so forth. Those are restful states. So you focus away onto the restful states that are being induced by the sleepiness and uh, you're not dealing with the sensory challenge, but you use that to uh, carry you through. And as I say, at some point you may get an experience of flow uh, and then you can, that's a focus on change strategy.